Hey team, the purpose of this video is to talk about the state testing practice portal. Now your teacher may refer to it by more than one name. It may be called the CASP, or your teacher might call it the SBAC, S-B-A-C, Smarter Balanced Assessment Consortium, or your teacher may just call it the end of year test. Whenever you hear any of those terms, your teacher is referring to the same thing. On this next slide, because of copyright uh, laws, I am unable to show this entire video to you. However, your teacher may be able to access this resource. This short three minute video talks about the power of positivity. There are two individuals who are shooting basketballs at a basketball hoop, and they each have a different disposition. Now their dispositions affect their performance. My purpose behind talking about this is that your disposition can affect your performance. So I strongly encourage you to think positively about how you will do on the end of year state test. Along the top of the screen, you will see a header. In this region, I'm gonna talk about the buttons that you see here. Just to let you know, in today's lesson, it is a practice session. So your scores will not be recorded. They will not be emailed to your parents. Your teacher will not have access to these scores. My desire is that you understand how the software works. So if you don't finish the entire assessment, that is absolutely fine. It is just a practice portal. This drop down menu right here will show you the different questions that you have had a chance to access thus far. If you are on question five, the drop down menu will go up to the number five. However, it won't show you questions six, seven, eight, nine, or 10 if you haven't gotten that far. You'll notice the back button here. The next button is the button that will take you to the next question. The save button is here. The pause button is here. Over on the right, you have the calculator, zoom in, zoom out, and the question mark up here. If the calculator does not appear on your screen, you don't need to raise your hand and tell your teacher that you cannot see the calculator because the calculator only appears on certain questions. If the calculator is there, that means you have permission to use the calculator. The zoom in and zoom out buttons are located right here. If you are squinting your eyes and leaning your body forward and craning your chin down, that means that the information on the screen is too small. I recommend that you zoom in slightly so that way you don't have to bend forward or squint your eyes. Make sure that you can read the content in a comfortable position. Use either the zoom in or zoom out button as needed. The question mark in the top right corner will bring up a help guide to help you use the software. It will not teach you how to answer any of the questions. It will only help you navigate the software. On this next screen, I'm showing you the add point and the delete point buttons. If you encounter a question like this, you would need to add points or delete points in order to answer the question properly. You might be asked to divide a shape in half using symmetry. In a situation like that, you might be asked to draw a line. If you make a mistake, delete the line and start over. In some classrooms, teachers encourage their students to underline or circle key content ideas inside of math questions. In the assessment, you do not have the ability to underline or circle key content, but you do have the ability to highlight using four different highlight colors. My recommendation is to take your mouse to the beginning or the end of that idea that you would like to highlight click and cast a shadow on that content. After you've had a chance to click and hold down your mouse and then cast a shadow on that content, right click right on top of that blue marking. This menu will appear and then you can choose one of the four colors. You might have four key ideas that need to be highlighted inside one math question. And now you have permission to highlight each of those key ideas using one of these four colors individually. The digital keypad will appear on many, but not all questions. If you need to construct a fraction, you would use this button. 
There are other times where other buttons may appear if you have a mixed fraction or an exponent. Use any one of those buttons in order to utilize those key ideas inside the open answer response area here. You have five buttons located above the digital keypad. Move left, move right, undo, redo, and backspace. You can either use the digital keypad on your screen or you can use the keys on your keyboard if they are numeric to put numbers inside of this answer response area. Not all words, but some words are available inside of the glossary. As you move through a question, you might see a microscopic dot 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 on the top of a particular word. If you're unfamiliar with that word or would like to see the definition, click one time and then this glossary will appear. When you no longer need the glossary, come to the right and then click over here where you see the circle and the X inside. At that point, the glossary will disappear. I'm sure most people will call, you, call this the menu button. However, I like calling it the pancake because in my opinion, it looks like a stack of pancakes. Using this button on any question throughout your exam, you will see this drop down menu appear, tutorial, notepad, or mark for review. Likewise, you would see unmark for review in this menu as well if you've already marked a question for review. When you mark a question for review, you'll either see a flag with a check mark or you'll see how the top corner of that question has been folded down. If you change your mind and you no longer want a question to be marked for review, use the pancake and then inside that drop down menu, choose unmark for review. You would use this situation if you want to come back to a question because you're not sure whether or not your first answer was correct. Maybe you'd like to think about that process for a few minutes before you officially answer the question. At the top of the drop down menu, you'll notice the tutorial. The tutorial is not designed to help you answer any specific question. The tutorial is only designed to help you understand the software. Once you've gathered any information that you need from that tutorial, choose the X located in the circle in the top right corner, and then that menu will appear. The notepad is located in the middle of that drop down menu. The notepad is a space where you can collect your thoughts. However, please note that this area will not be graded. Your answer still needs to go into the answer area. Please also note that this area will also be looked at by the individuals who to score the exam. So make sure that whatever you put in there is acceptable. In a situation like this where you have a table, even though you have the power to put a check mark in all six of these boxes, that would not be most appropriate. Only put check marks in the boxes that answer the question appropriately. If you put a check mark in any one of those boxes and you change your mind, click on the check mark one more time and then it will disappear from that box. Sometimes you'll see questions where some of the words inside of the question are bold. Please pause and pay attention to the importance of why those words have been selected to look that way. I also highly recommend that you read each and every question at least twice, if not three times, to verify that you are answering each question correctly. Using the drop down menu, you will notice how it says marked if you have marked any of those questions for review. I mentioned earlier that it will only go down as far as you have gone. This one tool, in my opinion, is quite important. You'll notice how it says strike through right here inside the drop down menu. The strike through is designed to cross out any answers that you think could be incorrect. Start this process by choosing the pancake. After you choose the pancake, choose strike through. After you choose strike through, then come through and click on any of the answers that you think may be incorrect. If at any point you have changed your mind and you want to undo some of those answers that have been crossed out, choose the pancake one more time and then click on any one of those responses that have been crossed out and they don't need to be crossed out anymore. Please note that it is your responsibility to put a solid circle inside any one of these answer options over here on the left. The test will only identify answers based on your selection. The strike through is not an instrument indicating to the tester that you have chosen the only response that doesn't have a strike through. Please remember to put a solid circle inside each correct answer.
Once your teacher has asked you to enter the practice testing portal, it might look like this. On the bottom left-hand corner, it will say practice and training test site. So you can verify beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is just the practice. You will not use a user ID or a password. You do not need a session ID. You will simply choose sign in at the bottom of your screen. On this next screen, choose from the drop down menu. Make sure that you select your grade. After you have selected your grade, listen to your teacher's leadership to determine which test you are supposed to click on. You have more than one to choose from. In the next screen, choose the select button that you find at the bottom of the screen. This very next screen has three steps and you must do all three of them. It is your job to click on the video to make sure that it plays. Now, my yellow arrow is pointing to this spot right here. Once you have played the video, this rectangle will turn green. If you cannot see how this button right here has turned green, you might need to scroll down the screen just a little bit. Once you have played the video and you've clicked right here that where it says that you could see and hear the video, you will see a small check mark appear in this corner right here. After you have selected both the top one and the middle one, then at that point you may click the continue button right here. You must do all three steps. On the very next screen, it will say begin test now. Click that green button and go ahead and practice all of these strategies that I've mentioned inside of this training video. Team, I have a feeling you're gonna do a great job. Thanks for paying attention and have a fantastic day.